Hey, what's going on guys? I am talking today about editing and speaking of editing, it's like the last chance to get in on the Mez headphone contest. I'm just extending it a little while to give everyone a chance because the channel's growing and I want everyone to get into it. Maybe if you've already entered into it, you're like, just do the draw already, Mark. But uh, all the information is below. Make sure to you know follow the channel, and leave a comment with the hashtag. But yeah, a lot of you guys have been entering into it. And you know, I do believe in these. I have them hanging right here. I use them to edit all the time. I love these headphones. So let's jump into this right away though. I wanna talk about editing and I wanna give you guys some tips, uh, some theory tips on storytelling, but also too, just some real practical tips like how I use Adobe Premiere, how I edit. Uh, I edit a lot of my own films. If it's bigger films, I'll work with editors on commercials and stuff, but on my documentaries, I love to edit. I love to get my hands dirty in the edit. So my first tip is you wanna get hotkeys. I can't tell you how long I spent not using hotkeys and it actually Actually breaks my heart because I think of all the time I spent moving my mouse around my timeline and it probably was years. I've probably spent years moving my mouse around the timeline when I could have just been using hotkeys. So the first hotkey you gotta add, or the one that I like at least, is the edit key. That just simply puts a splice in your video footage and in the timeline. And it's super helpful because when you're doing long clips or interviews, I like to put the edit key as the K button here in between J and L so that I can just press forward and then hit K and then I press play again and hit K again and I just hit shift delete and it's gone. It's just a quick way to edit a long interview or for me, if I'm doing a YouTube video, I'm gonna take this clip that I'm recording right now put that in the timeline and I'm never gonna touch my mouse. I'm just gonna hit space bar, I'm gonna hit K when I wanna make an edit, I'm gonna hit space bar again, I'm gonna hit K again when I wanna make an edit and this shift delete. And I, by the time I'm done within the time it took me to watch that clip, I've already edited it all down. So get the edit button. My other hotkey that I love is paste attributes. I think I've key mapped this to Y. I don't know why I put it up Y on my timeline, but but if you're like me, you're constantly copying settings that you did on one clip and adding them to another, whether it's reframing or color. And if you just add this Y button, you don't have to right click and say paste attributes. It's a really quick way to just keep color correcting, keep moving. Because the whole point of hotkeys is so that you can keep editing because the more time you spend going through menus and not thinking about the creative project you're working on, the less time you're actually spending making your project better. You're just thinking about the technology. So you want your computer to work for you. So make sure you get a couple hotkeys. There's no perfect way to do it. You have to find the ones that you like yourself. Um, what is another hotkey? Let me think of one more here that I like myself. Uh, oh, I know. I've added the ripple tool. I added it to my W button. Essentially the ripple tool, when you pull a clip to the side, it keeps it where it is. It just takes off the head or the tail of that clip. It's a really powerful tool. It's really helpful so that you don't have to just use the normal uh, edit tool and like pull it over and then drag it back to where it was. Get the ripple edit tool. It's very, very powerful. It means you're using the mouse, but sometimes you want to get in there and just finagle it with the mouse. So now that we're using hotkeys, my next tip is lay down your voiceover. Whatever project you're doing, if there's a voiceover or if there's some sort of interviews with the scripts is work on those first. Trust that your B-roll will always be there and you're gonna go work through that. But what you need is a good story and the human voice is often what will tell your story. So the first thing I do in an edit is I go to my interviews or I go to my voiceover, I go to the audio clips and I just lay that all down and then I play that back in my timeline. And if I can't just listen to the audio clips that I've placed in my timeline and actually begin to understand the story, then I'm worried that maybe I didn't get enough in the interviews and I then wanna put the B-roll on top and see if I can help bridge the gap. But you really wanna work on your audio first so that you have a coherent story. Because you, the first, if the first thing you're gonna do is start going through all the footage and just start putting it in random places, you won't actually know what story you're telling. So work on your audio first. I like to lay it all down. Actually, sometimes even before I do the interview, I'll find the music for a project. And actually, I get a lot of my music from Epidemic Sound. They're great. I just did a car commercial and I got a track from Epidemic Sound and it worked perfectly for the spot.
And actually what I did before I even shot the commercial is I took that music and I put it in my timeline and I cut it up so that it fit 45 seconds and I knew exactly what my film was gonna be like. You wanna know as much as you can before you ever get to set, because if you're on set and you don't know what your edit's gonna be like or you're just hoping it's gonna work in the edit, chances are it's not gonna turn out the way you hope. So before I ever went to set, I cut that music down into 45 seconds in my timeline and then I just played it back and played it back, played it back. I just sat at the office on the couch and I just listened to the music and I just pictured the film. I pictured what moments I wanted and then I would write it down. Oh, okay, I think I want the car spinning here or this would be a good moment to see our talent. And I played that over and over again. And so that when I was actually on set, I just heard the music in my mind and I was like, okay, this, this is the pacing, this is the vibe, this is the feel for the commercial. So I like to get the music. And what's really awesome about Epidemic Sound, not too many people are doing this, is they allow you to get the stems. And the stems are really important. What the stems are is it's the different part of the music. It's your melody, it's your percussion, it's your bass or different elements like that. And you can pull those elements out if you don't like them. And what's really great about this is often you find a song that you like certain parts of it and certain moments of it work for your film, but then other parts just suck. So for example, I just got this track off Epidemic Sound. I'm gonna play it for you here. So here's the track from Epidemic Sound. It's a good vibe, I'm feeling it. I could use this even in my new film, No Country is an Island. But then this starts happening. So I don't know what the heck that is. That's like a modified accordion or something. But what's awesome about Epidemic Sound is they actually highlight it. So here's the piano. And I love this piano. It sounds really good. It's a vibe. And then here's that weird accordion. Yeah, just not feeling it. It's not my jam. So what's awesome is with Epidemic Sound, they give you the stems so I can just use that super moody, vibey piano. Or I could even take that weird accordion if like someone else likes it that I'm working with and I could lower the volume specifically of that. So they give you some creative liberty, some creative license with their audio tracks. And the new search that they have in Epidemic Sound. Before I actually found it kind of difficult to find tracks in Epidemic, but they've completely revamped this and it's amazing. It gives you such specific moods, textures and tones. And so you can really dial in exactly what you want. And it's really helpful because searching for music is like half of editing. It's half the time you spend is looking for music. So I really love the new setup that Epidemic Sound has. It's working really well for me. So I love using that. So also too, for the next 10 days, if you use the promo code MarkBone on Epidemic Sound, you can get two months free for the creator subscription and one month free for the business subscription. No strings attached, go check it out. Use the subscription code MarkBone. They're awesome. I love what they've done with the Epidemic website. It's making searching for music so much easier and that is so helpful in editing because searching for music sucks, especially when it's bad music. But the great thing is if they're stems, you can take out the bad parts. I don't know how I could forget this, but Epidemic Sound has tens of thousands of sound effects available in their library too, which we used actually a bunch on No Country is an Island. It's awesome. I don't know how I forgot to mention that, but they not only have tons of music, but tons and tons of sound effects, and you get that with your subscription. My next tip is get it out of the bins. Like just get it out of the side where you're looking at thumbnails and bins. Get all your footage into timelines. And there's a few reasons why. One, you can start dividing your timelines up into themes. So for example, No Country is an Island, we had hours and hours and hours of footage. So we divided everything up into very, very specific timelines. We had church B-roll, we had aerials, we had interviews, we had street B-roll. And that way quickly, if we know we need a shot, we can go to that timeline. And what's even cooler about this is you can do what we call pancake editing, where you divide the timelines up. So you put them on top of each other like a pancake, like a really good club sandwich. If you're vegan, it's like a salad with falafels on top, whatever it is. But you put them on top of each other and then you can simply grab the shots you want. So the way I edit is I have all of my different timelines above my edit. 
So I might edit on the lower one, nothing else is there. And then I put all these different timelines, all the different B-roll. And so that as I'm editing, if I know I need a shot, I'm not digging through the bins looking for anything. I'm just simply clicking on that timeline. It's a simple way of editing. It's my favorite way to edit. Uh, it's just really effective. It keeps you from digging through the bins because again, you're trying to be efficient. You're trying to stay creative. You don't want to get distracted. You want to just be thinking about story. So, so make sure to put all your footage into timelines. You won't regret it. Another thing you want to do inside those timelines is you can add markers and I'll show you. So you go, you want to make sure you've clicked on the timeline here that you're not actually clicked on the clip because if you add a marker, it'll go right to the clip. So make sure you're clicked on the timeline, hit marker, hit it again, and now come up here and name this. I'm gonna name this Amajad Interview. And then I'm gonna grab the duration and I'm gonna increase it here, maybe just like 10, 15 seconds. When you come back to the timeline here, you see that it's created this marker. I'm actually gonna grab the side of it here and extend it. Now when I look at my whole timeline here, I can quickly tell that, oh, this is the Amajad Interview. And I could add these markers all along here. What is this? Oh, that's me. I could add, uh, this is Mark Bone. I'm gonna increase this, I'm gonna change the color, I'm gonna make it blue. Increase this. You know, it's really helpful when you do this, especially when you have a lot of footage so that you can, again, not be searching around your bins, going double clicking a bin, then double clicking another clip, and then opening it up in the viewer and scrubbing through that. No, 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 you just go into the timeline and you drag your cursor along it and you'll see everything that you have. My last editing tip is get Proxies. Well, not get proxies, create proxies. Proxies are essentially a less compressed version, or I guess a more compressed version rather, of your footage that is much easier for the editing software to use. It's less high res, it's just a much smaller file. And what's awesome is it's super simple to make. You just go into your bin, click on the footage, right click, and say create proxies. And then once you have those proxies there, there's actually a button over in the timeline that says toggle proxies. So you can look at the full res footage or you can work on your proxies. It's super simple and I highly recommend it when you have a lot of footage because when you start using a ton of 4K, high res, high bit rate footage, you can start really slowing down your edit, can make the project file bigger, you're more susceptible to crashes because sometimes Premiere doesn't like when you have a giant, giant project, but the proxies are really easy to work with. Now. If you're using something like a drone or uh, a mirrorless camera that resets the numbers whenever you record so that every time you put a new card in, it starts at 000, make sure you rename all your files in that project so that none of the clips have the same file name. Now, the problem is if you have the same file name and you're toggling proxy, the computer doesn't know which file to look at. So it's going to go back to just probably the first one sequentially. So we've had this problem in past projects where then when you toggle your proxies, you're looking at a completely different shot than what is actually in the original file. So tip, rename all your files if there is duplicate file names from two different memory cards. Also to bonus tip, duplicate your timeline often. That way, if you change a bunch of stuff and you don't like it, you can go back to a previous timeline. It's like keeping a history of what you've been doing. I also find too, when I duplicate timelines, it makes me a more brave editor because I'm not afraid to pull apart all the work I've done and try something new. So duplicate your timelines, mark the date down, say version one, version two, or just November 15th or whatever, but be brave, try something new. So I hope those tips helped. Just to recap, make sure to get hot keys, especially the edit key. If there's one key you need, it's the edit key. It's like the splice tool. Get away from going onto that toolbar and clicking and finding your thing. Just slowly remap your keyboard so that you don't have to click on anything as little as possible. It takes time, it takes time, but it's worthwhile. Number two is cut all your audio first from your interviews, from your narration. Then I like to put the music down before I ever start putting B-roll on top. Or even listen to the music before you ever go out into the field. Then you'll know the style of filming that you wanna be doing to capture the best footage so that everything is working together. Number three is pancake edit. Put all your footage into timelines, get out of the bins, work in timelines. That way you can look at all your footage very, very quickly. And then you can just drag and drop, it's awesome. And don't forget about that link selection tool. Once it's clicked on, then you have your audio linked and your video linked. Once it's clicked off, then you can just grab down and there's only video. 
Number four, use proxies. Get away from using full res footage in bigger projects. If you're just doing a quick project, doesn't really matter. But I found recently, I don't know if you've had this issue, but Premiere 2020 sucks with drone footage. We even have an iMac Pro in the office just over in the edit suite, and we've spent like $15,000 on it, adding all of the best software into it and all the best hardware, and it still can't play back aerial footage from drones right now in Premiere 2020. So Adobe, if you're watching this, please fix that. I really would love for that to be improved because it looks ridiculous. We have to transcode it all into ProRes. That doesn't really matter. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this. Don't forget that promo code for Epidemic Sound, Mark Bone. It gets you a free few months of the creator subscription and a one free month trial if for the business solution. And also too, don't forget to sign up for the headphones because if you're going to be listening to good music on something like epidemic you want good headphones for that but i'll catch you guys on the next one um leave some comments below let me know what kind of videos you want i know some people have been asking about my coloring process other people have been asking about what lenses or how i approach my shot listing from documentary i'm happy to talk about the nitty-gritty i love to talk about the more detailed stuff as you know i don't really care to talk about gear as much as other youtubers i prefer to talk about filmmaking because I enjoy filmmaking and the gear there is to help me become a filmmaker not the other way around you don't become a filmmaker by knowing gear it's so funny gear is great but it's really not the point of filmmaking and if you enjoy gear then maybe work at a rental shop or or at b &H photo that would be a great place um, but stop making us watch your travel videos anyways see you guys in the next one